So what happened to Supermicro on uh, Friday? It got high, as high as $1,045.50, and then by the end of the day, it was down to $803.32, a 20% drop. What happened? I think it's important to understand exactly what happened, and that's what I'm going to do in this video. I'm going to actually take you to our Friday Stock Talk, where this was a subject that Trent went into in great detail to help people understand what happened. And then to what I'm going to do is then say, what happens next? What is the future for Supermicro? Was it a balloon? Was it a bubble and it burst? and it's going to continue to go down, well, let's dig into it and make sure we know before the market opens this morning. Um, today was a big day in the world of uh, options. Um, it was a what they refer to as a triple witching day. And what that is, is that means there are um, equity stock options that expire, index options, and then cash uh, options expire, all expired today, uh, which is pretty significant. And uh, this is a chart of the um, most active uh, uh, stocks that were traded today using options uh, overall. And so as you can see here, the number one uh, stock today that was uh, heavily traded using puts or calls was NVIDIA. And today it had $2 billion worth of options that uh, in call options, which means um, when you buy these, uh, you think the market is going to go higher, or um, or you think the or or you think the market's going to go lower, so you would short this and sell a call. Um, it had two billion there. Uh, put contracts was about um, five hundred fifty six million, and so that's a pretty big number when it comes to the option world. The one that I want to take a look at is number two, and that was uh, super, uh, super Microcomputers. And it had $1.34 billion in option uh, calls that were traded and $1.12 billion in puts. Now, a put is when you think a stock or an index is going to go lower and you want to profit from this. And so, as you can see here, 82% of all the uh, calls and puts are were single legged options, meaning they bought them with the idea that it was going to go in one direction. So if I thought in this case, a lot of people thought um, super microcomputers was going to go lower, they bought a put contract or multiple put contracts, and they didn't do any sort of fancy combination or anything. Only 18% of that was done in combination. What I, the reason I'm pointing this out is this top 10 of these represented 48% of all the options that were traded today. And today being a triple witching day, which means, you know, three different types of options expire. This can be, uh, this can be a bit concerning because the daily average option value is about 40,923,535. Today, it was 48712015 The point of this is this was a very big option expiration and activity uh, day. And it creates a bit of concern because of the mechanics of when you buy an option, a market maker does something to hedge that. So if you bought NVIDIA uh, or super microcomputer calls back in mid-January, that would expire today, um, you uh, buy that call and that market maker goes out and he'll buy the stock, super microcomputers, or, and to hedge that, or he may sell a put so he can make money on that as well on the premium amount. It's a little bit complex, but the point of this is the amount of volume and the amount of stock movement we have seen in particular NVIDIA, super microcomputers, and Meta, and a handful of others have all today had a massive expiration. So no longer is that floor that the mechanics of buying a call have create. And we all remember GameStop and guy, these guys were buying the calls, which forced the market maker to buy the stock, and it pushed the stock from what, below $10 to over 400 
at one point. Well, when those options expire, there is no need to own that stock if you're the market maker, so you sell it. The point of all of this is this month or last month or so, we have seen some massive spikes in some of the different uh, stocks, in particular, uh, super microcomputers and NVIDIA. Today, that floor that pushed those stocks higher went away as of three o'clock, okay? That's why you saw a lot of these, you know, super microcomputer, NVIDIA, all pulled back because they they exited their trades. So the market maker exits his trade and the, the owner of those calls exit their trade. The question is, is the floor that has pushed these stocks and a handful of others higher still there or is it gone? And the only way we'll find out is on Tuesday when the market opens up. And I think that's where you start to look at the mechanics of how these markets work and how so much influence has been put into the market by these the option world, in particular the zero days to expiration options. It's moving markets in a very abnormal way. And I think it's something to take in account with combination of the economy and everything else that's going on. Doesn't mean these companies are bad or anything's wrong with them. It's this in some, some cases, in particular, a handful of these that are on that list are, have been artificially pushed higher for really that for no justifiable reason other than just pure greed. So I wanted to bring that up because I, after watching NVIDIA and super microcomputers for the last couple weeks and its vertical movements, looking at what's been pushing it now expires and could be in my chances are may not be there next week to support it and we could see a pullback in some of these stocks which creates incredible opportunities overall so that's uh i found that well i find it interesting um but i find it it's one of those things that we have to take into account when we're looking at buying a stock when is the proper time to buy it when is the proper time to sell it and what are the forces that are pushing stocks and bonds in the direction they're pushing them. Okay, so that's a very detailed explanation of why Supermicro fell down 20% over the, that date's time. Where is it going to go from there? I suspect there's a lot of retail investors in there. The volume was seven times what it, its average volume was. So I suspect we might have some people who uh, are licking their wounds this weekend and a day extra day off on Monday, and they may uh, do some more selling. So is there a floor, like Trent was mentioning, that it might come down to? Yeah, there is a, a Fibonacci uh, retracement level that it, it might touch. We can take a look on the computer on that. This is my Supermicro computer trading views chart. And, and I know a lot of you don't put a lot of faith in technical analysis, but I want to point something out to you. This is their path since January of 2024, and you can see they go up, and as they went up, they created some gaps. That is the, the close uh, of business on February the uh, 13th until the open of business on February the 14th, the stock gapped up and created that bar right there. It did it again the next day and created that bar. Notice when the price went down on Friday where it stopped, right at the gap, closed that gap. So there is some basis for technical analysis. Okay, with that in mind, let's analyze this and come up with some ideas as to what's going to happen next. This is what's called a Fibonacci retracement. It is a historical uh, an analyst, technical analysis that says you trace the low to the high on any uh, extraordinary run-up. Well, we had an extraordinary run-up. That says that it will retrace itself to roughly 50% and a maximum of 78.6% without any real driven reason, okay? So that would bring our, our Fibonacci retracement to $698.06. That's a point at which to notice. And as you can see, that's right at $700. The other thing I want you to notice is this uh, violet looking line. 
And as we as we bring it out further and further, we can see the price as it moved, and it really took off back in uh, May after the earnings call in uh, May of um, 2023. It it hovered above and below this violet line. See how it did that? And then as we got into this this tremendous run up here, it no longer hovered along the line. So I would say if in fact it is going to come back to the line, where will it come back? Well, I'm going to guess it's going to come back somewhere out here in March. And so let's assume that line goes up and this price comes down. It's probably going to come somewhere close to that $700 mark. It may do that Tuesday, today. I don't know. Because again, the other thing that I know is this is a stock that is driven by amateurs. Notice the change in volume. Here's your average volume, somewhere around 6 million shares. You'll see it right there. Somewhere around 6 million shares a day. What did it do on Friday? It, it did 34 million. That tells me as Trent explained, a lot of options, a lot of unusual things happened to create that volume. So I expect the volume tomorrow, Tuesday will come more down into this range of, say, uh, 12 million. This will be those people who saw what happened to their holdings on, um, on Friday will wake up Tuesday and say, I've lost enough. I've lost 20%. If it goes another five, I'm out. That's what will happen. There will be stop loss orders put in. If that drops another 5%, which would be about $40, and we would be down here around $760, okay? Um, if that happens and we hit a stop losses of 5%, it'll tumble all the way down to the 700 mark. And that's where I buy in. And I buy in because Supermicro makes the computers that go into the data centers. This all happened as they were selling computers to Amazon Web Services, to Azure from um, Microsoft, to Apple, to Meta. This, this all was driven by $250,000 computers being sold to the big five, okay? Now, my question is, are they done buying? No, I don't believe they are. They're still building out the infrastructure. And then you've got the pineapple coming in, the pineapple company that I've been talking to you about this last two weeks, that Sam Altman is raising $10 trillion. That's as big as Apple, Microsoft, um, uh, Amazon combined. He's raising that money. What's he raising it for? He's going to create a fund to pay these people to build out the artificial intelligence structure in the rest of the world. Right now, it is a sum total of Silicon Valley and the United Arab Emirates. The United States in the CHIP Act allocated about $280 billion dollars. Sam's raising $10 trillion because he knows that $280 isn't going to get it done. It, that, that won't even get it done here in the United States. So he is building this group of companies, which I choose to call Pineapple, to finance building out the infrastructure across the rest of the world so these 10, 12, 20 companies don't have to wait 40 years to reap the benefits of this technology like they had to with the internet. Yeah, they want, they, they're greedy, they want to move it faster, and they also recognize from a, a, a good person standpoint, it's going to make the world a much better place. It's going to give that young man who lives in Zimbabwe, who's 18 years old right now, who has a tremendous mind and doesn't really have access to artificial intelligence, but if he did, he could cure cancer, okay? And, and, and if we could get the data from all over the world is what to co what causes the cancer and compare Carrie's body with somebody else's body in Iran and, and learn how to take the disease out of my body because of what we learned from his body, the world's a better place. And, and then if we, 
from what we've seen they're going to do in all aspects with artificial intelligence, it's going to be a better world. And then you add uh, machine learning and quantum computing to that, and it's going to be heaven. Okay? It's going to be heaven. And they recognize that. And they need $10 trillion to make it happen. So Supermicro is going to still be in the game because they're going to be selling those boxes that they sell for $250,000 that want to fill a, a, a data center is a billion dollar uh, investment. They're going to be selling them not only to Amazon, Google, Apple, and Microsoft, they're going to be selling them all over the world. So it's a buy, along with about 20 other companies. And I cover them in this report that I made available to you uh, for free. The link is in the description. It is my January 2024 semiconductor update. It explains this ecosystem. Who are the players and who are going to be the winners of the pineapple movement? That's my name for it. It's a play on Apple. Uh, because it's going to be the, the most important thing that happens in our lifetime. So, with that said, super macro, maybe as low as 700, buy, buy. And then get my report, it's in the description, the link, and you'll know who the others are to buy. And then come to my website, sign up for our platinum program, and access my cheat sheet. It's going to tell you on a daily basis because the price I want to pay for Super Macro changed Friday, okay? Because it wasn't a bubble burst. It was an options movement. And if you understand that, you will not miss out on the best investment opportunity thus far in anybody's lifetime because the world is about to change. Come to next Friday's Stock Talk and we'll talk more about this.